it is a true honor to be here with you today. Um, you know, it really is a full circle moment to be able to do this here at Sanford. That's what brought me to Alabama, and it has really transformed my life. I want to thank first Kristen Box, of course, for her invitation, Sterling Hutchins, Rachel Stokes, and the entire Schweitzer team for this incredible honor. I want to thank Dulce Rivera and Pueblo for the kind introduction and the words. And I want to congratulate the fellows. I think you all are doing extraordinary work. I really had the opportunity to review the research projects and the interventions that you all are creating for communities in need, and it's incredible that you all have been able to have such an impact already. And the posters are amazing. So congratulations. I want to give you guys a hand. I'm really interested in awe of how the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship illuminates paths for emerging professionals who are now dedicated to addressing and meeting our most pressing health needs. You have been chosen not only for your academic prowess, but for your profound dedication to fostering substantial change. And each of you burns the flame of potential to better our society's health. I was amazed in reviewing your, reviewing your projects by the breadth of, and the impact, raising awareness to creating avenues for access to care, from working on improving mental health to creating programs for stress reduction for oncology patients, the ability to see the needs of the community, and then intentionally create solutions centers an approach guided in the very people that we serve. Today, I titled the talk, Common Threads in Uncommon Times, because we need more compassion in the world. We need more people who are willing to build bridges so that we see the similarities and commonalities that we share as opposed to the differences that continue to divide us. We live in really contentious times. All you have to do is turn on any news channel and there are reasons that people want to fan flames of division. There are reasons that people want to continue to create different groups, us versus them. But I'm here to tell you that the most important thing that we can do is develop we's. So the, the most important thing that we can develop is recognizing the humanity within each other. And that we need to be able to foster ways to bring dialogue, but also solutions, because the world needs us, the world needs you. In your journey as professionals, you will face many challenges. Sometimes they will appear insurmountable. But I'm here to say that it's only when we come together that we can conquer the impossible, overcome the improbable, and that we need to find ways to bring others along on our journey. I'm only able to achieve the things that we're able to achieve at ECA, on City Council, by realizing that it's not just me. It's not just my vision. It's the vision of a whole community that brings us together. That we don't need to have all the answers or solutions, that we need to rely on the folks that are around us. And I love hearing the testimony from the fellow saying that let's ground our work in the community. The people closest to the problem are the people who are closest to the solution. And when we open our hearts and minds to the fact that folks already know what most ails them, and that we cannot come into communities as saviors, but as partners, we'll all be better for it. Because that elevates all of us. When we create opportunities for people to see themselves as empowered to resolve their issues in their community. You know, I had the honor of being a professor here at Stanford for five years. And I love working with students. I very much, in fact, miss the classroom. But the opportunity to work at HECA and to serve community directly was too much of a pull. And so I did that work, and I've been doing that work now for six years. And then I decided to run for city council and, and got elected here in Homewood. And what I find is that there are so many people who want to work with me. If you're willing to pull up your sleeves, to give of yourself, to open your hearts, and to overcome divisions, because I don't agree with everyone who's on city council with me. We have very different political perspectives, but what I do know is that people care 
about garbage getting picked up on time, <laughs> about potholes being resolved, speeding cars in your neighborhood. I'm gonna tell you all, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or Democrat, no one wants to get their hit, the kids hit on the middle of the road. And we come together to find, find real solutions that help all of us. We can find avenues to thread each other's humanity so that we are all better for it. Whether it's through the economy, we all have a workforce problem that we need to resolve. We need to train more young people and provide opportunities, whether they're black, white, Latino, Asian, what have you. We all have real health crisis to resolve. We all have civic engagement issues to resolve as a country and as a nation. And we all need to come back to a common ground and stop fanning flames that do more to divide us than bring us together. For me, serving others and building bridges serve as my northern star to why we do this work. It's truly a full circle moment to be introduced by Lucia Rivera, who I met as a young college student. And now she serves on the board of directors for HECO. And she's a leader in our community. And if I need some help with some issue around, because also her family is involved in the Spanish language radio station, how do we reach community? I called Lucy and said, hey, can we set something up at Mi Pueblo? When COVID hit, we put up testing sites at Mi Pueblo. We put up vaccination sites at Mi Pueblo because you know where the community was? At Mi Pueblo. <laughs> <laughs> I want to encourage you all, first of all, this is a little commercial. If you want some good sweet bread, <laughs> and you want some good valuable lime prices, <laughs> and meat, go to Mi Pueblo. They have some of the best selection <laughs> in the community and the best uh, food court. You will eat for days on that $13, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> True leadership, I believe, is born when you step outside of your comfort zone. I, I would ask that the fellows not shy away from these challenges. To not let adversity be the reason why we don't step into the arena. Embrace these as opportunities to grow and lead by example. The world needs leaders who are not only skilled and intelligent, but also brave and compassionate. In this room, I'm asking you to look left and right to each other. These are your colleagues. These are your fellows. This is your cohort. You're going to be able to call on some of these folks and say, hey, I have an issue. How have you been able to resolve that? Or do you know someone you connect with? I saw you were working on so-and-so. I would love to connect with them. We are each other's best resources. And we can't underestimate the value of being able to utilize and leverage these relationships to resolve big problems in our communities. I have here with me Sylvia Espinosa, who is our development director at ICA. And she, along with 33 other folks who make up the team, are the reason that we're successful. That we're able to leverage the resources and intelligence and networks of all the folks who want to be involved in our organization. And we try our best to build bridges along those paths. And I think that we need to do this in adopting an asset-based fra asset framework as well. Sometimes in health, in other industries, we see communities as being efficient, as being something for us to fix. But what I realize in the work that we do at ICA is that our community is already resilient, persevering. They, in our example, have already done the hardest thing that any of us will ever do, which is leave their countries to come to a nation where they may not speak the language, where they may not know anyone, to be able to travel 2,000 miles for an opportunity to improve the situation for yourself and your families to me signals someone of incredible strength and ability. We need to pour into our communities and realize that their strengths are already there within. And how do we leverage that? How do we multiply that in impact? Let us not feel sorry for the people that we serve. That is counterintuitive, but it's also counterproductive. We need to figure out ways in which we can bring people together to maximize their own help and 
impact. I want to close because I don't want to think here for too long and say that we do this work in Alabama. I travel the country talking about the work that we do at HIPAA, and everyone always asks me, like, in Alabama? <laughs> You're doing this in Alabama? You're talking about immigrants in Alabama? The answer is yes, because it's so important and vital for us to be able to do this work. But I'll also say this, HECA has been around now for 25 years. We're actually celebrating 25 years this year. And we couldn't have done it without the support of Alabamians, without the United Way, without the Community Foundation. And despite the rhetoric of some of our elected officials from the state of Alabama, we get quite a bit of substantial support because they understand that we need to lift up all boats. And I also like to remind people that we have much more in common than we realize. I mean, when I'm talking to a room of folks in the South, in Alabama, and they're asking about immigration and immigrants, I try to remind folks that we have a shared understanding of faith and the importance of that. We have a shared understanding of family and the importance of that. We have a shared understanding and appreciation of pork. And we need to bring that together. <laughs> Latinos and Southerners have much more in common than we realized, especially if it's a pig roast. <laughs> so, I think that there are ways for us to realize that we are people first. Yes, of course, I want us to be able to recognize the uniqueness that each of us bring to any particular arena. If you're a young Hispanic woman, if you're a seasoned African-American professional, if you're a white student who's trying to do good in the world, we can do this if we're willing to work together. Nothing is too large for us to be able to overcome, but we need the desire to be able to do so. And the world and our communities need us to do so. And with that, I want to thank you for allowing me to be here. I would love to talk to anyone who wants to reach the Latino community or the immigrant community broadly, but I'm just grateful for your effort. Because, because of you, the world will be better. Thank you.